Today's Steve Rossi Nothing is brought to you by Bedhead Hair Styling Products. Bedhead, make your hair look like you just got out of a sleeping bag. Don't have any bedhead products? Well, stay up for 65 hours and you'll look like you have bedhead in your hair. Going bald? Well, just throw some bedhead in your hair. It'll look like you've been electroshocked and give you maximum coverage. Bedhead, now get your clothes out of a can and enhance your bedhead lifestyle. Going out for a sharp date? Open the can. Throw the bedhead in your hair. Don't have any bedhead? Stick your head in the toilet and dry it off. That's bedhead. I kind of like that as a... I could probably narrow that down to a quick joke. I've gotten so much... If like there's any reason I'm doing this outside of just having fun, I get material from it. To me. I get material from it. I get a lot of... Most of the jokes I have are from just doing this stuff. You might think, well, that's not that funny, Steve. But wait, just give me a few... Give me a week. I'll narrow it down to a joke. Getting your clothes out of a can is a funny line. And I didn't, you know, everything I do, obviously, on here, I'm talking so fast, it's out of place. I don't write any of it down. I don't put any of my act into here. But you know what's interesting is that I did, com- I've done comedy, stand-up comedy, in clubs. Whether they do, they be all open mics, whether they be a few paid gigs. Since I was 21, uh, on September 7th, yesterday. It's been 13 years since I did my first club gig. Before that, I did it in the dorms, but that isn't. I also played piano for 13 years prior to that, and my grandmother taught my brothers and I lessons twice a week. We had to practice every day after school. All of our scales, our songs, uh, there was a bunch of different categories. It would be a mad dash to the piano after school. Who could get home and bang out, uh, I'm going to live forever from fame fastest, just so we can go out and play. So, But I really, uh, and especially my grandmother, you know, so be, she's an author, an arthritic author with uh, a piano pianist, and a teacher of piano, are, are good, you know, so they spend time with you. You're not paying for a lesson. I spent a lot of time learning piano when I was young, um, and played it for 13 years till I went to college. I mean, I can still pl- play, but I, I stopped lessons then. The point is, I was inundated with like just having to learn tonality. Even when I was frustrated and didn't want to learn the piano, it was the ages of my life I didn't want the piano. But I had to. I, I was pounded with this timing and tonality, and now like as a recluse, and it kind of came out of my mouth weird. As a recluse, we'll pound out the details at 11. What? Now, because um, I had to step away from this, the New York comedy scene for a while, but I, I, I believe I had these things pounded into me from when I was young. So I'm just laying on the ropes, and then uh, when it's my turn to come out, and, and, I, and I'll just come out with a flurry, a flurry of stand-up. And I'm still getting my act together, but I, I like doing these recordings because they help me gain material. George Carlin said you can play the violin alone, you can sing alone, you can't do stand-up comedy alone, which is true, but there are ways to hone yourself to... Be in front of a crowd. When I say do stand up, I'm still doing it. I just, I mean stand up every night. I mean like a career. You set, 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 uh, multiple sets every night. Uh, you just, I just can't do that right now where I am. But I do like that bedhead joke. But the point I, I was even bringing up is that uh, it's been 13 years, spent 11 years writing one liner jokes. I didn't intend to, they just kind of came out of me like that, even though, as you not, can tell you, I'm a storytelling, talking person. But what I always say is, Carlin, when I listened to him as such a young kid, I didn't even know what it was. I thought it was like a funny alien sent here. And Seinfeld taught me what kind of jokes were. And then Mitch Hedberg was the guy that, like, he, he I got on stage because of Mitch, I think, and a teacher. I would just write these one line jokes. In hindsight, I was probably like trying to write for Mitch Hedberg, even though they were in my own. There were jokes you might have been able to say, but I said them in my own voice. Maybe when I first started there, I had too much of a timbre of him, but I was very conscious of that. Only you got to just be, you can only be yourself to be great. Listen, take, take it from me. Cue ball a failure. Let me talk to you about greatness, even though I know all about greatness. No, it take it from me because you don't know my last name. And then many those dollar bills in my uh, bank account that aren't even worth anything. They just say promise to pay. Tomorrow, they could you could be just as broke as me, but I'd be richer in spirit. You know, Ope, it's not just the material things that make a person rich. It's friendship and love. Wow, Barney, that is so well said. (laughs) You know, Ope, it's not just the materialistic things in life that make a person rich. It's friendship and love. So I spent 11 years, 10 years just, you know, I was trying to find my voice, but these are just one-liners that come out of me, so I couldn't like ignore them. Just and I would and I would on stage put them in my voice. You know, sometimes you sound corny just reading a list of one-liners, but I I had never had an opener. That was always a benefit to me. I, I never know. I still don't. I just not having anything to open with is a great asset if you can use it. It can also spiral into a bunch of schmuck in your set, but um, as, as long as I these days I kind of know where I'm going. But I guess what I, I'm trying to say is that now now all my jokes are uh, personal. They're, they're at least story jokes. They're, they're, they're longer jokes. Like I used to just say, uh, you know, in my voice, I would say, you know, if you have an emergency in an office, you got to dial 9911. 
and I would talk about staying in the red light district in Amsterdam and how there was so much traffic. And I, if Hitler had, I, I, we should be able to go to Hitler.com for all our uh, Hitler information. And that Canadians refer to their penis size in metrics. That's not fair. And in college, the teacher's aides were not helpful. It's things like that. I got a million of them here. Not a million. I have 115. I lost 40 pounds uh, in London in one day. Fucking blackjack. I stopped doing these jokes because they just weren't so much in my voice. Even though they were working on stage and people were laughing. And once in a while I get paid. I pay you under the table in comedy, which is really cool. But it's also filthy and uncomfortable. This kind of stuff. It's very hard for me. I don't know how to transition from... I'm learning to transition from my personal material in to throw these a couple of these in. But sometimes the audience will, they will love it if I just do one-liner stuff. Oh, they'll love it. But they, I'll have good sets if I do one-liner stuff. But if I do personal stuff and then go back to one-liner, they almost get like a little groany. Like, they're like, oh, we want to hear that. It's like, it's corn. Like, I, I'll just like do my thing and then I'll say, you know, I think the slogan for expired bug spray should be, couldn't hurt a fly. Or, ice cream is probably the most delicious thing that smells like nothing. You know, and, and they like that if I just do that. But the personal stuff they also like, I think they're liking more. I mean, this is, uh, it's like having two starting quarterbacks. Steve and your uh, hovel here alone. But it is kind of like that. I don't know exactly which direction to go. And that's what you need the stage time for. I, I need desperately the stage time um, to figure this out. When I just did my last set, I didn't even, I wasn't even smiling, like I realized. And I don't like the whole smiley thing on stage all the time. Like, it's fun to perform, but it's like, hey, ain't I cute, ain't I clever, look at me, yeah, da, da, smiley. I'd just rather just get the material. I had a lot to say. And so for me, that's what it was, just hearing the new words of all the new material. I didn't do any of the one-liners. I just threw all my new material in, and I, I just wanted to say it with my stage legs under me and say it to people. Um, they're actually um, a bad, well, a bad audience in the sense that they weren't too savvy. They would laugh at almost anything, so it wasn't really rewarding in that sense. But I wasn't there to listen to laughs. I was really listening to myself. And this has been another uh, great thing that no one cares about. I care about it deeply. I, I love comedy shop talk. All I ever want to do in my life is sit at that comedy cellar table. I said I would never sit there until I worked there. And uh, I think this is already too long to tell that story of Eric Rivera uh, uh, fucking me. And Well, it turned out to be a great day because Patrice O'Neill destroyed me. But, um, Another time, another day, Steve Rossi, away.